Could this little capsule here help to prevent cancer and help those under treatment for the disease to improve their chances of survival? Well, the answer is yes. Now we're talking here about the miracle hormone vitamin D3. I first realized the importance of this vitamin during our recent pandemic, where patients admitted to the hospital were given massive doses of vitamin D3 in order to improve their chances of survival. But not much was discussed about this practice or published in medical journals. In fact, it was very difficult to find papers outlining the importance of vitamin D in the treatment of this particular viral illness. Now, I have over the years as a practicing physician frequently tested patients' vitamin D levels and can tell you that in over 90% of those not supplementing, their levels were consistently below the reference range. And this is, of course, highly concerning. Vitamin D3 is extremely important in the healthy functioning of our immune system. To simplify this, you could say that your immune system in the absence of vitamin D3 are uh, naive middle school students, uh, not really ready for the workforce by a long stretch. Vitamin D3 helps them to mature, achieve a college education, diploma, and work experience, and turns them into productive, efficient defenders of the immune system that are ready to fight pathogens, including viruses, bacteria, and of course, cancer cells. Now, there are many medical publications showing that adequate vitamin D levels are essential for a better outcome in cancer patients. Vitamin D may also have a preventive role for cancer as it improves the immune system. And when we think about the immune system, we really have to realize that it's not only tasked with external pathogens, but also with internal malfunctioning cells, including cancer cells. And here's an interesting conversation between famed British oncologist Dr. Delgleich and Dr. John Campbell. Why does none of the other immunotherapies work in pancreatic cancer? And I said, well, this is probably the first trial where we insisted that the vitamin D levels had to get into the normal range. He subsequently, he couldn't believe this. He said, I've never heard of this, and I'm a very big pancreatic trial cancer person. His name was Daniel Von Hoff, and he was quite, uh, he was huffing and puffing about this. <laughs> but he phoned me three months later to say he would put somebody on a study to check. He'd done 4,000 patients on different trials over over two to three decades. And he came back and he said not a single patient responded to a single chemotherapy agent if they had a low vitamin D level. He was absolutely knocked out. And the really good ones that they put down to the later agents as they came along on the trials, that the responses were purely correlated with the fact these rare patients had high vitamin D levels. So mm. this, and so the, with this, it's one of the things I've always said, we're going to stimulate the innate immune system, you must have a good vitamin D level first. But vitamin D has many other functions in our body, including bone health, cardiovascular health, hormone production, cognitive function, weight loss, anti-inflammatory function, and glucose metabolism. Now, vitamin D3 should always be taken together with vitamin K2, magnesium, and zinc. Now, K2 is actually very important here as it redirects the reabsorbed calcium that's facilitated by vitamin D3 to bone rather than it, you know, allowing it to deposit in arteries. And this can cause conditions like atherosclerosis and hardening of the arteries. So the combination is really important and many manufacturers offer this combination. You know, it's, it's already uh, put together. So when you buy it, these two a lot of times come together. I think it's a good idea to buy it this way. Magnesium and zinc further enhance several functions of vitamin D3. Now, I talked in other videos about the issue of taking too much vitamin D, especially if not taken together with other supplements, which has gotten some people quite agitated. Now, while I admit that it's very rare to overdose on vitamin D3, it is certainly possible. Hypercalcemia seems to be the major issue here, and this could result in bone pain and kidney problems. Now, the best way to avoid this is to check blood levels of vitamin D3 and work together with your primary care doctor. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, my doctor doesn't know anything about vitamin D, doesn't want to, you know, uh, talk to me about it and really is no, no help here. I totally understand that. Maybe you should educate your doctor, though. I think it is very important to understand this. Vitamin D is essential, again, for the immune system. And if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, which many of us do, in the wintertime, we don't have sufficient UV radiation to produce any appreciable amount of vitamin D3 from sunlight. Besides that, if you think, you know, uh, back to 100 years compared to that time, we spent very little time outdoors in sunlight, even in summertime. So that's why levels are chronically suppressed in the general population. And it may be one of the reasons why we have such poor health 
especially in Western countries in the Northern Hemisphere. So um, again, educating your doctor on this might be a great step because your doctor will probably have to write a script for you to go and get your blood levels checked at some point. And I would just suggest to do that once you're on a dose for, let's say, a couple of months on a stable dose, get the level check and see where you are, right? And interestingly, individual requirements of vitamin D3 and tolerance can vary greatly. Now, I've seen patients that had issues with as little as about 5,000 international units daily while others had taken 20,000 national units without any issues and did have significant improvements of multiple, multiple symptoms. So therefore, this is really uh, not medical advice. I, I know this is something that most uh, physicians especially say in each video about a supplement, but you know, just keep in mind, this is actually acting as a hormone. This can have unwanted effects. And even though it's over the counter, you should really take caution in taking it, of course, right? But I do agree with that. It is a very essential supplement. And again, in my experience, more than 90% of people that are not supplementing will be deficient, and this can have real health uh, issues for them, of course, right? Now, if you found this topic interesting, you should definitely check out this video here about metabolic therapy and this video about methadine blue.